What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, daily news, what's going on in the United States, Washington, D.C., money, investing, and the next stimulus package, which has been announced by the Democrats at $3.5 trillion. But we basically have one senator, Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat from West Virginia, who is threatening to dramatically cut the size of the stimulus package from $3.5 trillion all the way down to less than half of it, half the size of it, down to potentially $1.5 trillion, one single senator from the Democratic side. Remember that this next stimulus package, which is supposed to be the largest stimulus package yet to date, um, the largest stimulus package was the first stimulus package underneath former President Donald Trump, which was $2.3 trillion. If we go all the way back to that first stimulus package, that was the one that provided $1,200 stimulus checks and $600 stimulus checks to children. Now, the last stimulus package, the third stimulus check package underneath Biden, that was $1.9 trillion, but it actually had the largest amount of money that went to the people in the form of stimulus checks of $1,400 stimulus checks for adults, $1,400 stimulus checks for children, and $1,400 stimulus checks for adult dependents and college students. And on top of that, it also had the $3,000 to $3,600 child tax credits, and other stimulus provisions in there, like almost $50 billion in rent assistance. By the way, I just did a really good video, I think it was today, um, on how one of our viewers got almost $13,000 in rent assistance and how you could too. I literally walk you through how to do that. I'll link you through how to do that at the end of this video. Um, but even at $1.5 trillion, that's probably a starting point for Joe Manchin. If they negotiated up to, like, say, $2 trillion, that still would be a pretty big stimulus package. So I'm going to give you a latest update on that and what the other Democrats are pressuring Joe Manchin to do, as well as the latest news going on here in our country today. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out on our channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below, and I will keep you up to date with everything going on in our country. Okay, first of all, I want to say beware of scams that look like this down below in the comments. You can see this um, reply from a scammer or a spammer that looks like it's Jimmy. Okay, I'll actually zoom this in here a little bit, and um, you can see it looks like it's it's Jimmy. Let me remove myself from the corner here a little bit so you can see. Um, but you can see there's a lot of scams and um, scammers, spammers, impersonators going on on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all across the Internet right now that they want you to contact them and sp scam you. They want to, you know, it's a common everyday scam. This is not me. They don't have a check mark by their name, and their name is not highlighted in gray. Depending on if you're on a, the YouTube app or desktop computer, I will have a, a gray mark around my name or a check mark by my name. Just know that I will never have contact you in the comments here and ask you to contact me with some strange phone number, and I don't use WhatsApp, and I will never ask you to contact me in the comments in this regard. Note this is a huge scam going on across all the social media platforms and not just for my channel, all the popular YouTube channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, it's just a huge thing. Obviously, there's other scams going on in the mail, um, phone call scams. I'm sure you get phone call scams all the time. Um, the, the general rule of thumb is don't give anybody your credit card number or anything like that, social security, anything like that. Um, if you don't know them and don't trust them, just don't do it. Okay. So just know that I will never do anything like that in the comments. If you see them, just disregard them. I have blocked like five spammers today alone. Um, but even after they block them, I think you can still get notifications when they respond to your comments. So, uh, easiest thing to do is just disregard them. Just know that I'm, I check my comments all the time and I block them right away. Uh, but YouTube has been pretty good on blocking them, but it just... There's not much that we can do. I do the best I can. 
the FBI has released the first 9-11 document following President Biden's new executive order to release classified documents to um, help the families that have... um, the families of the loved ones that died in the 9-11 attacks, the families have been asking the administration, the government administrations from past presidents to release classified documents for years. And uh, President Biden finally obliged them after 20 years. And the FBI has now started to release documents. And uh, they have now started to do that. The FBI released a heavily redacted 16-page report from April 2016 related to its investigation regarding the role that the Saudi Arabian government played in its supporting the hijackers who carried out the 9-11 attacks. It did not, however, include conclusive evidence regarding whether the kingdom had a function in the the 9-11 attacks. The FBI agents in the newly released memo discussed their examination of phone records that seemed to link some of the subjects of the probe to an associate of Osama bin Laden or other individuals who ultimately became detainees at Guantanamo Bay. The report also details instances of which some witnesses offered information that was inconsistent with some claims made by some subjects of the investigation who rejected having any knowledge of the plot. The report does go into a moderate amount of detail, financial details, travel documents, and all sorts of stuff. And this is just the first report. There will be multiple more reports apparently um, set to come as um, there will be a lot of documents related to 9-11 being released. So uh, if you're interested in that, it might be some uh, light bedtime reading. But um, yeah, pretty interesting classified documents will be released on 9-11 here 20 years later based on this uh, President Biden executive order. Yeah. There's been a lot of controversy over President Biden's other executive orders, been a lot of executive orders lately, um, over the vaccine mandates. One particular story here, story here, hospitals are, uh, one hospital in particular is going to stop delivering babies after 30 staffers quit over vaccine mandates. About 75% of the country is vaccinated, but there's about 25% of the country that's not vaccinated. And uh, check this story out. A hospital in upstate New York will stop delivering babies later this month after 30 staffers quit in protest after the facility's vaccine mandates. Lewis County Health System CEO Gerard Kayer announced at a press conference on Friday that the Lewis County General Hospital will be unable to safely staff its maternity department beginning September 25th. Quote, the Department of Resignations received leaves us no choice but to pause delivering baby at, babies at Lewis County General Hospital. The resignations came after the hospitals two weeks ago revised its emergency regulations requiring vaccinations for employees, taking away the option for religious exemption. Medical exemptions, however, are still permitted. The policy change followed an announcement from then New York Governor Andrew Cuomo that said all healthcare workers in the state must be at least partially vaccinated by September 27th. This has now been more reinforced by the new um, health care workers uh, presidential executive order by President Biden that has just been reenacted. He said that 464 individuals in Lewis County health care system are vaccinated, a 73 percent vaccination rate for its employees. However, there are still 165 individuals who are not vaccinated and have not yet signaled what their plans are to receive a shot yet. But as you can see here on this whitehouse.gov website, requiring vaccinations for over 17 million healthcare workers and Medicare and Medicaid participating hospitals and other healthcare settings, the, um, the government, based on President Biden's new executive order, now requires all these healthcare workers to now be vaccinated. So, um, yeah, all healthcare workers under this new executive order are going to have to be vaccinated. And obviously, this is creating a lot of controversy. Even though 75% of the country is vaccinated with at least one shot, if you're part of the 25% that's not vaccinated, well, 
you're going to obviously think that's a very controversial move. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. The problem where it comes in is that if you're part of the 75% that's vaccinated and you go to a healthcare facility, if you're just thinking about this as a realist, I'm not trying to pick side because I'm not trying to give medical advice to anybody because I don't know if you're a part of the 75% or the 25%. But if you're vaccinated and you go to a healthcare facility, and what President Biden said, his words were something like, um, you would want to know if that person's vaccinated, the person who's giving you health care, the person who's treating you. So that's why the president made it mandatory for the health care professional. So, but obviously it's, it's a very controversial move because we still have 25% of people that are not vaccinated at all. And I think it's only natural that um, we are going to see some people quit because 25% of the country is still like, I think it's like 80 million people. So yeah, it's going to be, we're going to have a lot of bad, we're going to have, we're going to see a lot of legal battles too, for sure. Because um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's very controversial. Another thing very controversial is Senator Joe Manchin right now. Uh, if you didn't see the video from uh, the last video that was at uh, 3 p.m., I mean, you definitely should check that out. Senator Joe Manchin gave an interview followed by Senator Bernie Sanders. And man, Senator Joe Manchin is getting blasted by his own party, his own Democratic Party. He's literally the one and only Democratic senator that wants to cut the next stimulus package in half. In half. So um, we have some other senators like Kirsten Cinema that are like, well, I'm not sure about the $3.5 trillion dollars. But none of them want to go from $3.5 trillion down to $1.5 trillion. That's actually less than half. He, Joe Manchin has actually even said uh, $1 trillion a few times. So Senator Joe Manchin is getting blasted by his own party. By his own party. In fact, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is a uh, House Democrat, has said um, what a lot of the progressive Democrats um, think a lot of the progressive Democrats actually want to spend more than three point five trillion dollars, especially because um, what they're saying is that because the package is paid for, the package is fully paid for. Now, whether it's going to be ninety five percent paid for or ninety percent paid for, we don't. I don't know the details because the Congressional Budget Office will score it when it comes down to. But Ocasio Cortez blasts Senator Joe Manchin, saying that uh, he's in the pockets of large corporations like Exxon. And that large corporations are paying him off, basically, to tank this stimulus package. Senator Joe Manchin on Sunday responded to criticism from uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who claimed in a tweet that Manchin had huddled weekly with personnel from Exxon, Exxon Corporation, contending that such attacks continue to divide, divide, divide. AOC says Senator Joe Manchin has weekly huddles with Exxon and is one of the many senators who gives lobbyists their pen to write these so-called bipartisan fossil fuel bills. And this is true, at least in the fact that a lot of um, senators or even representatives, they will, give the, they will give lobbyists, they will let them write their portion of the bill um, in a way. So senators themselves will sometimes let the lobbyists write the bill for them and then look it over after the lobbyists write the bill for them. Yeah, believe it or not, that's sometimes how this is done. AOC says it's killing people, our people, at least 12 last night. I'm not sure what she's referring to right there. Um, at least 12 last night. Sick of this bipartisan corruption that masquerades as clear-eyed moderation. So a lot of people, a lot of Democrats are blasting Senator Joe Manchin as Senator Joe Manchin is trying to backpedal. Joe Manchin uh, said he denied, have any, denied having any meetings with Exxon or any other fossil fuel lobbyist, saying, absolutely not, absolutely not. He says, I keep my door open for everyone. It's totally false. And uh, check this out. This is interesting. Senator Joe Manchin previously called for a pause in deliberations on the reconciliation bill, which many of his colleagues in the upper chamber are against and in the House. The upper chamber is the Senate. 
a lobbyist for ExxonMobil was, this is where a lot of AOC is getting, getting this from amongst other sources. A lobbyist for ExxonMobil was caught on undercover footage published in June saying that he speaks with Senator Joe Manchin's office weekly. Weekly. Quote, Joe Manchin and I talk to his office every week. Lobbyist Keith McCoy said, according to footage by Unearth, which is affiliated with Greenpeace. Yeah, so Joe Manchin and I talk to his office every week, said lobbyist Keith McCoy. Gee, imagine that. Imagine that. McCoy on the recording said the, sen the senator is a kingmaker. Added that on the Democrat side, we look for the moderates on these issues in their attempts to thwart policies that may have a negative impact on the company's businesses, uh, business, according to NPR. ExxonMobil chairman CEO Darren Woods later released a statement condemning the remarks made by McCoy, including comments regarding interactions with elected officials. He said the comments in no way represent the company's position on a variety of issues, including climate policy and our firm commitment that carbon pricing is important to addressing climate change, adding that the company was, quote, shocked by these interviews. Imagine that. It's also interesting to note a couple different things. Number one, and I'm not picking sides at all here. I just want to kind of note a couple different things here. Number one. Former President Donald Trump lowered the corporate tax rate by, uh, it went from 35% all the way down to 21% in the 2017 Trump tax cuts. The Democrats want to raise it from 21% up to 28%. And Joe Manchin is the one and only senator that I can think of off the top of my head. And I'm pretty sure he's the one and only senator that only wants to raise the corporate tax rate to 25%. Does that sound ironic to you? So he says, oh, I'm willing to raise the corporate tax rate, but I only want it to go to 25% when pretty much everybody else is okay with raising it to 28%. And remember that it was just rate or it was lowered all the way from 35% all the way down to 21%. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, 35% all the way to 21%. And then we wonder why we're just, our, the national deficit is just going crazy right now. It's insane. And remember that former President Donald Trump, he added eight plus trillion dollars to the national deficit, the national debt, in just four years. In just four years. Now, uh, let me see here, $3.3 trillion of that was the two stimulus checks the two stimulus packages, $2.3 trillion from stimulus package number one and slightly less than $1 trillion from stimulus package number two. But I mean, we still had almost $5 trillion in just four years from just running the country from everything else. So I mean, uh, we're just blowing through national debt here. That was the Republican-run uh, country for four years. And Biden's really not doing better. In fact, He's probably doing worse. Biden is blowing through the national debt as well. Remember, Biden, with the third stimulus check package, spent almost $2 trillion, $1.9 trillion as well. But even the Fed says that we're in a once-in-a-hundred-year pandemic. People need help right now, and our economy needs help right now. And um, if we didn't have all these past stimulus packages, our economy would have crashed. Our economy would have crumbled. We would have had a 1929 Great Depression. And I mean, during a once in a hundred year pandemic when people are in need and pandemic is just out of control right now and poverty is out of control right now, unemployment is still really, really bad. And 37% of small businesses have gone out of business. I mean, our economy is rough. Yeah. So I don't know, Senator Joe Manchin, you need to get, uh, maybe someone needs to ring him up and let him know that... Uh, our economy is still very, very struggling. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. So I will keep you up to date. Make sure to subscribe down below. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this top video here to watch the new video about stimulus checks and stimulus programs that have just been announced. 
This bottom video is how to get rent assistance. You can get up to $13,000. And this video is our new family channel video with Julian's Adventure, my son, video number two just released. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.